You are a God of comfort. You are a divine God. And thank you, Lord, for loving us. We want to cherish the life of our dear auntie. You have given her a beautiful life. Blessed her in this world with the so many heavenly blessings. I remember Dr. Samangal and the children and the family, all the dear ones, all the church family gathered here this evening, O oh Lord. We want to remember the goodness of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love and care upon our life. You have given us the privilege to look unto you in any situations of our life. We ask your peace upon our life and strength upon our life and comfort upon our life. Lord, we commit the entire service in your mighty hand. We bless everyone, those who are gathered here. And we want to rejoice in your presence, O oh God. And you are a good God. You are a good, good Father. And we acknowledge your presence. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray.
This evening we have gathered together in the shadow of sorrow and grief, and yet we realize the glorious light, the greatest hope that the world has ever known, the promise of eternal life for the faithful Christian. Today we have come here not to mourn the loss of our dear sister, but to celebrate her life. There are many wonderful memories of our dear sister, Kunyamol, and that shine out as we remember and celebrate her life of 72 years in this world. Let us hold on to them instead of our sorrows. Her life here on the earth may be over, but her life in heaven with her beloved Savior, Jesus Christ, just began. We can rejoice because she gave us so much in her time with us and we praise God that in her life where there is no more pain, no more tears, no more sickness has begun with the God in her new home. One of the major themes in the book of Ecclesiastes is that everything in this life including life itself, is a temporary. The author wrote that for everything, there is a season, a time to be born, a time to die. The words that are so relevant and appropriate for us today. In what short sentence the author has expressed the, how fragile the life really is. There is a time to be born and time to be die. This reminds us that life is a precious gift to be enjoyed, even though life is so brief. There is a time to weep, a time to laugh. There is a time to mourn, a time to dance. There is a time for everything and season for every activity under the heaven. Sister Kunyamol and time here with us has been completed and we will see her again. And now I pray that you will be comforted in the knowledge of that, our grief, our mourning, and our time to weep is only for a season. So this evening, let us sit in the presence of God, pray for the grieving family, and we celebrate her life of 72 years reading from the Holy Scriptures, Psalm chapter 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. We bring man back into dust and say, return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it passes by or as a watch 
in the night. You have swept them away like a flood. They fall asleep. In the morning, they are like grass, which sprouts anew. In the morning, it flourishes and sprouts anew. Toward evening, it fades and withers away. For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath, we have been dismayed. You have placed our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days have declined in your fury. We have finished our ears like a sigh. As for the days of our life, they contain 70 years, or if due to strength, 80 years, yet their pride is but labor and sorrow. For soon it is gone and we fly away. Who understands the power of your anger and your fury according to the fear that is due you? So teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Do return, O Lord, how long will it be, and be sorry for your servants. O satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days you have afflicted us, and the ears we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your majesty to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm the work of our hands. Dear brothers and sisters, we are gathered here for the celebration of the glorious life of our dear Anna Auntie. When I heard the news of the promotion of uh, uh, Anna Auntie last Wednesday, although there was sorrow in my heart, I was glad that our Auntie had reached her final destination where there is no more pain, there is no more suffering, there is no more troubles. Anna Auntie was truly a warrior. She was a fighter. She not only fought her physical or health challenges, but she valiantly fought her spiritual, her mental, her emotional battle. She defied on numerous occasions medical signs. I'm grateful to Sam Uncle and Joshua for giving the church family and friends a chance to visit her before her departure, even uh, due to the COVID situation. Last Saturday, we got an opportunity to visit her and celebrate her 72nd birthday. And we were able to uh, sing happy birthday to her, and she was very happy. The moment we walked into the room, uh, Sam Uncle uh, asked Auntie, do you recognize them? And uh, Auntie said, yes, yes, I, I, I recognize. I know Stephen and Blessy. They are my favorites. <laughs> and uh, Aji was right behind us, and she immediately shot back. Wait a minute, Auntie. Didn't you just say that to us too? Then uh, Sam Uncle goes, oh, she's very diplomatic. You know, she does that to her kids as well. I'm sure many of you may have got that kind of a response uh, from her. But no offense, Freddie and Aji, we are still her favorites. <laughs> Those few moments that we spent uh, with her that morning were really very precious moments where we were able to recount God's goodness in her life. One of her striking qualities was her ability to say good things about others and uplift them and never talk bad about anybody. It was also beautiful to see both uncle and auntie uh, shower praises on each other. You know, usually we hear such things in memorial funeral services after the person is long gone. But the opportunity that we got to recount God's faithfulness and reflect on auntie's beautiful personality and character, that was just memorable. Finally, the high point of our visit was when we were leaving. She said, I love you, and she blew a kiss as if uh, when, when, when our loved ones, they board a flight to depart, and just to say that we'll meet you, we'll meet you soon, the same way Auntie bid us goodbye, saying that I will see you on the other shore as she boarded her flight to her eternal home. What a blessed dis departure. And Auntie was a tower of strength to our entire church family. And she was a walking miracle, as on numerous occasions, when our church family came together on the prayer lines, and we, when we interceded and prayed for her, God touched her and healed her. 
But now it pleased the Lord to call her home. To Sam, uncle, I want to say that you epitomized true love by your selfless sacrifice and care for our dear auntie all these years. And it is truly an inspiration to all of us. Joshua, Susan, and Lisa, I know you dearly loved your mom, and your mom loved you too. But humanly speaking, it is, it's very hard to say goodbye to your, uh, to your mom. But at this time, I want to encourage you from the word of God. Jesus said, peace I live, leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. May the word of God and God himself comfort you. At this time, I would like to convey our family's condolences as well as uh, Tony and Regina and their family's uh, condolences and love to you. May the peace of God that passes all understanding rest upon you and guide you all these days. Thank you. It's such an honor and privilege to be here, especially with the family, with Anna and T, um, and with all our church members. Um, it's my heartfelt condolences and the churches as we are talking on behalf of our family and the church. Anna and T was not only an auntie to me, she was a close friend to me. Um, we met around um, 2009, um, later part of 2009, when I think when you all came to church. And from then on, we, we st struck an instant bonding. Now, you may ask why Susan is here. Susan is here because I said, hey, uncle never left auntie's side. So I said, you, you need to be with me. Because that's the type of example uncle always showed. Uncle, you were not only a great husband to auntie, you were a bad example to us. The reason you were a bad example to us is whenever we come to your home and whenever we saw you taking auntie on the wheelchair to the church, to you know the weddings, to the graduations, Everywhere you took auntie along with you on a wheelchair when it was so hard. When I come to your house and I see you calling her beautiful names and feeding her, Susan would look to me and say, are you learning something? So I stopped bringing her. If you, <laughs> if you, if you, if you have noticed, I stopped bringing her and I started coming alone to your home. I would say, hey, she likes your fish curry and mango curry, but I will take it by myself. You don't have to come. But, you know, we had so many precious moments, at, at, you know, for many times where we used to hang out, we used to talk to each other. I know Dr. Stephen, Freddie, and Aji, I guess they all said they were favorite. She called me to favorite. <laughs> But this time, she called me not only favorite, she told me, we let Susan marry Joshua because you are Joshua and Susan. Because you are such a good example, so we let Susan and Joshua marry. I mean, that was, that was the way she used to connect to us. It was so amazing. And when she's, and not only that, Dr. Stephen, I have it on video. I don't know if you have it on video. I have it on video, she telling me in front of everybody, that I'm her favorite, Joshua. <laughs> but um, it's, it's amazing um, to reflect on Auntie's life. Um, the one thing she said to me also was, uh, once when I came and sang a song um, with, a mar with my mouth organ, I had no talent. But, uh, you know, I learned it by myself. No, no chords, but she loved it. And, and she sent me Joshua. I said, you know, she sent me, Joshua, you did really good. I said, Auntie, are you joking? She said, no, you're going to sing for me on my homegoing service. It was such a hard um, feeling. But, um, and, you know, when we were um, on the bedside when Aunt Auntie was leaving, Uncle, after some time, came and told me, remember Auntie told you that? So you have to sing 
with the mud organ. Um, one another incident I always cherish is somehow, I don't know how uncle takes her to restaurants, brought her to the church, took her to the weddings, took her to many meetings, and to Lisa's graduation. It's amazing how uncle would, me. you look smaller than auntie. How would you carry it? He would carry, put her in the, um, in the car, remove her. It was so difficult. And uncle did it very uh, sincerely. Also, when she was um, here, when she comes and sits all the way in the back in the wheelchair, um, she used to signal to me, and we had a thing going on where she used to signal to me, and I would go to the kitchen, bring her some nice hot coffee with cream and a little sugar, and then she would hide it because if uh, Sebastian uncle or Bino uncle sees us, we'll be out of church because we are not allowed to bring coffee in that church. And she would hide and drink. And uh, you know, th it was so good. But anyway, Uncle, Lisa, Joshua, Susan, our heartful, con ha our hearty con condolences to you all from the church, from our families, from our parents. We all love you. Anytime, contact us. We are of the reach. In fact, when, in the last day when we met Auntie, um, in the last, before her birthday, Auntie became all, you know, nice and started, though she was in hospice, she started talking and laughing like, uh, you know, pretty uh, healthy. Lisa looks at her dad, I mean, I'm watching this, okay? Lisa looks at her dad and says, I think we should cancel the hospice because it looks like she's not going anywhere. <laughs> I said, that was, you know, she always came back, and she always had um, um, a way of coming back, and and she, she almost did. She, um, but I think the last few months of all the children being with her and being in Joshua's house, she, I think she thought this was the time to go, and she was rested. And so let me play a song, and I hope. Auntie is listening. Um, if it's not good, forgive me because she still loves it. <clears throat> Pardon me. Thank you. God bless you. In the Sanjay Samet and the Andy, the Niagara, the Niagara celebration, I stop. And they can look on Otto Stoil, Iron Duki, and the Iron Prayasa Prono, and the Otto Stoil. Two thousand seven daughter, Doctor Angelay, Kunbate, Badia Pruan, Nangra, Jivutil, the Yomriaki, the first call of Faith Fellowship in the Fagama Tiring Yankare, Miti and at the Yumaria Kida. Another Tinuere Uru Nala Savor Nepole, Uru Almi Savor Nai, our Nekanakaki, Alako Beri, and the Apollo Brahim, you are a brother to me. And did a family Ganum Brahim, the Samachan brother. Angle in the family Ganum Brahim is the end of brother. Angan Yanka Uti Stalangal. America Para Pagangal Yanka wanted to drive Yan Palapangal visit the Sandoshpanoka, the Umriaki, Audake, 
ആൻറ്റി ഒത്തിരി തമാശ പറയുന്ന കൂട്ടത്തില്ല ഞാനും ഇച്ചിരി ചെറിയ തമാശ പറയുന്ന കൂട്ടത്തിലാണ് ആൻറ്റിക്കത് ഭയങ്കര ഇഷ്ടമാണ് എൻ്റെ തമാശ കേൾക്കാൻ ഞങ്ങൾ ഡ്രൈവ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് രാത്രിയിൽ ചില സമയത്ത് ഒത്തിരി സമയത്ത് എന്നാ രാത്രി യാത്ര ചെയ്ത് രണ്ടായിട്ട് വരും അപ്പോൾ ആൻറ്റി ഫ്രണ്ടിലായിരിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ ആൻറ്റി ഉറങ്ങത്തില്ല ഞങ്ങളോട് വർത്താനം പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ടും തമാശ പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കും അപ്പോൾ ഒരു ദിവസം ഞാൻ ചോദിച്ചോ പറഞ്ഞു നിങ്ങൾ എന്നെ സമയത്തിന് മുമ്പേ അങ്ങ് എത്തിക്കുന്നതിന് അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഞാൻ ഉറങ്ങാതിരിക്കുന്നത് നിങ്ങളെ ഉണർത്തിയിരിക്കുന്നത് എന്ന് പറയാൻ ഇടയായിത്തിരുന്നു ഞങ്ങളൊത്തിരി റെസ്റ്റോറൻറ്റുകൾ കയറി ഇറങ്ങിയിട്ടുണ്ട് ഈ ഡാളസ് പ്രദേശങ്ങളിലും പല പ്രദേശങ്ങളിലും ആൻറ്റി പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് ആൻറ്റിക്കൊരു ഇതുണ്ട് ബന്യപുതറിന് ഏത് ഫുഡാണ് ഇഷ്ടം ബന്യപുതറിന് ഏത് റെസ്റ്റോറൻറ്റാണ് ഇഷ്ടം അത് പ്രത്യേകം ആൻറ്റി ശ്രദ്ധിക്കാറുണ്ട് എന്നോട് ചോദിക്കും ബന്യപുതറ ഇന്ന് എവിടെ നമുക്ക് പോകേണ്ടിയേ ഇന്ന് ഏത് ഫുഡാണ് നമുക്ക് കഴിക്കേണ്ടിയേ എല്ലാ ആഴ്ചയിലും ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ഒന്ന് രണ്ട് പ്രാവശ്യമെങ്കിലും കൂടുവാനും ആൻറ്റി സിക്കായിരുന്ന സമയത്ത് വീൽ ചെയറിൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഓക്സിജനിലാണെങ്കിലും ഞങ്ങളുടെ വീട്ടിൽ കടന്നു വരാതിരിക്കത്തില്ല എവ്രി വീക്ക് ഒരു പ്രാവശ്യമെങ്കിലും ആൻറ്റി ഞാൻ അവിടെ ചെന്നില്ലെങ്കിൽ ആൻറ്റി ഇങ്ങോട്ട് വരും ആൻറ്റി അങ്കിളോട് പറയും നമുക്ക് ബന്യപുതറിൻ്റെ വീട്ടിൽ പോകാം ആൻറ്റിക്ക് ഞങ്ങളുടെ വീട്ടിൽ വരുന്നത് ഒരു വലിയ സന്തോഷമായിരുന്നു ഞങ്ങൾക്കും അതുപോലെ തന്നെ അവരുടെ വീട്ടിൽ പോകുന്നതും അവരുമായിട്ടുള്ള ആ സഹകരണത്തിലും ആ കാരണം ഒരു ബ്രദറിനേക്കാൾ കൂടുതലായി എന്നെ എൻ്റെ കുടുംബത്തെയും ആൻറ്റി നല്ലതായിട്ട് സ്നേഹിച്ചു പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് ഞങ്ങളുടെ കുടുംബത്തെ പേഴ്സണലായിട്ട് ആൻറ്റിക്ക് അറിയുവാനും അവരുമായിട്ട് പരിചയപ്പെടുവാനും ഒക്കെ ദൈവമിടയാക്കി ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ഒരു പ്രാവശ്യം ഇന്ത്യയിൽ കടന്നു പോകാൻ ദൈവമിടയാക്കി ഞങ്ങൾ ഒന്നിച്ച് ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഭവനത്തിൽ രണ്ടാഴ്ച താമസിച്ചു ഞങ്ങൾ പല ഫല ഭവനങ്ങളിൽ കടന്നുപോയി അവിടെ ചെന്നിടത്തൊക്കെ ആൻറ്റി എന്നെ കൊണ്ടുപോയും അവരുടെ കുടുംബത്തെ പരിചയപ്പെടുത്തുകയും ഒരു നല്ല സഹോദരനായി നല്ലൊരു കൂട്ടുകാരനായി ആൻറ്റി എന്നെ കരുതി എല്ലായിടത്തും കൊണ്ട് നടന്നു ഞാൻ ഇത് അവസരത്തിൽ ഓർക്കുമായിരുന്നു ആൻറ്റി ഞങ്ങൾക്കൊരു ഭയങ്കര മിസ്സിങ് ആയിരിക്കും ഞങ്ങളുടെ കുടുംബത്തിൻ്റെ ഞങ്ങളുടെ സഹോദരങ്ങളുടെ പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് എൻ്റെ അമ്മ ഇപ്പോൾ അത് ദുഃഖിക്കുന്നുണ്ടായിരിക്കും ആൻറ്റി ഭയങ്കര ഇഷ്ടമായിരുന്നു എൻ്റെ അമ്മയ്ക്ക് ഇവിടെ ആയിരുന്നപ്പോൾ ഇപ്പോൾ അമ്മ ന്യൂയോർക്കിലായിരിക്കുന്നു അമ്മ എന്നാ ഒത്തിരി പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് ആൻറ്റിക്ക് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് എപ്പോഴും കാണുമ്പോഴെല്ലാം പറയും ആൻറ്റി ഞാൻ പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ആൻറ്റിക്ക് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് ആൻറ്റി സുഖം പ്രാവശ്യം എന്ന് പറയുവാൻ ഇടയായിരുന്നു എൻ്റെ മദർലോ ആണ് അതിനേക്കാൾ എപ്പോഴായിട്ട് ആൻറ്റിയെ സ്നേഹിക്കുന്ന ഒരു മാതാവാണ് എപ്പോഴും ആൻറ്റിയെ കെട്ടിപ്പിടിച്ച് ഉമ്മ വെച്ച് ആൻറ്റിയെ ഭയങ്കര സ്നേഹമായിരുന്നു ആൻറ്റിയോട് ഈ കുടുംബത്തെ ഇങ്ങനെ പരിചയപ്പെടുവാൻ ദൈവമിടയാക്കി ഞാൻ ദൈവത്തെ സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് ഫ്രിസ്കോ ഫെലോഷിപ്പിൻ്റെ അനുശോചനവും എൻ്റെ കുടുംബത്തിൻ്റെ അനുശോചനവും എൻ്റെ കുടുംബത്തിൻ്റെ ഞങ്ങളുടെ സഹോദരങ്ങളെല്ലാം ഇന്ന് ഇപ്പോൾ ഇത് വാച്ച് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് അവരെല്ലാം നിങ്ങളോടുള്ള ആ സ്നേഹവും ആദരവും ഒക്കെ അറിയിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ദൈവം എല്ലാവരെയും അനുഗ്രഹിക്കുമാറാവട്ടെ എനിക്ക് പറയാനുള്ളതെല്ലാം ജോഷയും ബെന്നിപ്രറും പറഞ്ഞു എന്നാൽ ഒന്ന് രണ്ട് വിട്ടുപോയ കാര്യങ്ങൾ മാത്രം ഞാൻ പറയാൻ ആഗ്രഹിക്കുകയാണ് രണ്ടായിരത്തി മൂന്നിലാണ് ആൻറ്റിയെ അങ്കളിനെയും പരിചയപ്പെടുന്നത് ഞങ്ങളുടെ മെഡിക്കൽ ഡയറക്ടറായിട്ട് അങ്ങനെയാണ് ആദ്യം കാണുന്നത് അന്ന് തൊട്ട് ഈ നിമിഷം വരെ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് വളരെ ആ സ്നേഹബന്ധത്തിൽ ആയിരിപ്പം ദൈവം സഹായിച്ചു ആൻറ്റി ഞങ്ങൾ സാമങ്ങൾ മെഡിക്കൽ ഡയറക്ടർ ആയതിന് ശേഷം എനിക്ക് പോകണത്ത് പോകാനായിട്ട് പലപ്പോഴും അങ്ങനെ ഒരു സാഹചര്യം ഒരുക്കി അപ്പോൾ സാമങ്ങൾ ഡോക്ടറെ കാണും പേഷ്യൻസിനെ കാണും അത് കഴിഞ്ഞ് നേരെ ആൻറ്റിയുടെ ഓഫീസുണ്ട് പേഷ്യൻസ് അവിടെ വരും അവിടെ നിന്ന് വിശേഷങ്ങളൊക്കെ പറഞ്ഞ് സാമങ്ങൾ ഡോക്ടർ ആണെങ്കിലും ആൻറ്റിയാണ് ഇമോഷണലി അവർക്ക് സപ്പോർട്ട് കൊടുക്കുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ സാമങ്ങളിനേക്കാൾ പോപ്പുലർ ബോണത്ത് ആൻറ്റിയാണ് ആന ആൻറ്റി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ ആന എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ബോണത്ത് എല്ലാവർക്കും അങ്ങനെ ആൻറ്റിയും അങ്കളും ഞങ്ങളെ സംബന്ധിച്ച ഒരു വലിയൊരു ബ്ലെസ്സിങ് ആയിരുന്നു ബിസിനസ്സിനെ സഹായിക്കാനായിട്ട് ആൻറ്റി എന്തെങ്കിലും പേഷ്യൻസ് ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ വിളി നേ വിളിക്കും അങ്ങനെ പേഷ്യൻസ് തരും അങ്ങനെ ആ ബന്ധം വളർന്ന് ഒരു നല്ല സുഹൃത്തിനേക്കാൾ ഉപരി എൻ്റെ ഒരു അമ്മയുടെ റോളുണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഒരു നല്ല സഹോദരിയുടെ റോളുണ്
നല്ല പീക്കായിട്ടുള്ള സമയത്ത് ആ ജോലി റിസൈൻ ചെയ്ത് ആൻറ്റിയെ നോക്കാനായിട്ട് അപ്പം ഞങ്ങൾ പറയും ആൻറ്റിയെ നോക്കാനായിട്ട് രണ്ട് എം ഡിയാണ് കൂടെ ഉള്ളത് അത് ആൻറ്റിക്ക് വലിയൊരു സന്തോഷമാണ് എന്നെ നോക്കുന്ന രണ്ട് എം ഡി ആണ് അപ്പോൾ സാമങ്ങൾ വിളി ഞാൻ ഇടയ്ക്ക് വിളിക്കുമ്പോൾ ചോദിക്കും ആൻറ്റി ഇന്നത്തെ മെനു എന്താണെന്ന് ചോദിക്കും അപ്പോൾ ആൻറ്റിക്ക് തൈര് സാധം വലിയ ഇഷ്ടമാണ് അപ്പോൾ സാമങ്ങൾ യൂട്യൂബിലെല്ലാം നോക്കി തൈര് സാധം സാമ്പാർ ദോശ അങ്ങനെയുള്ള തമിഴ്നാടൻ ഭക്ഷണങ്ങൾ ആൻറ്റിക്ക് വലിയ ഇഷ്ടമാണ് അപ്പോൾ അങ്ങനെ സാമങ്ങൾ മെനു ഉണ്ടാക്കി ചോദിക്കും ടൈമുണ്ട് നമ്മൾ ഹോട്ടലിൽ പോയാൽ പതിനഞ്ച് മിനിറ്റ് മാക്സിമം പതിനഞ്ച് മിനിറ്റ് പക്ഷെ ആൻറ്റി പത്ത് മിനിറ്റാണ് ടൈം കൊടുത്തിരിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ സാമ്പാർ റഷാണ് ഈ പത്ത് മിനിറ്റ് കൊണ്ട് തൈര് സാധം ഉണ്ടാക്കണം സാമ്പാർ ഉണ്ടാക്കണം അപ്പോൾ സാമങ്ങൾ വളരെ ബിസി ആയിട്ട് ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞതിൻ്റെ ചുരുക്കം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ സാമങ്ങൾ ആൻറ്റിയെ നോക്കി രണ്ട് ആ ജോലി രാജിവെച്ച് നമുക്കെല്ലാം ഒരു മോഡലിനേക്കാൾ ഉപരി സാമങ്ങളെ സംബന്ധിച്ച് ഞാൻ ഞാൻ പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഹസ്ബൻഡ് ഓഫ് ദ ഇയർ ഞാൻ പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഈ ഈ വർഷത്തെ ഇത്രയും ത്യാഗം സഹിച്ചിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു വ്യക്തി ഉണ്ടാവുമെന്ന് എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നില്ല അത്രയും ത്യാഗം സഹിപ്പാനും ആൻറ്റി ആണെങ്കിൽ എല്ലാ ആഴ്ചകളിലും നിങ്ങൾ ജോഷയും ഒക്കെ പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ നല്ല വശങ്ങളാണ് നിങ്ങൾ കണ്ടിട്ടുള്ളത് അത് ആൻറ്റി ഒരു ഒന്ന് രണ്ട് ദിവസം ഒന്ന് രണ്ട് പ്രാവശ്യം രാത്രി സാമങ്ങൾ ബാത്റൂമിൽ കൊണ്ടുപോകാനായിട്ട് പോകുന്ന സമയത്ത് ആൻറ്റി നിലത്ത് വീണു പക്ഷേ ആൻറ്റിക്ക് ഒരു ഒരിക്കൽ താല്പര്യമില്ലായിരുന്നു നയൻ വൺ വിളിച്ചിട്ട് കൊണ്ടുപോകാനായിട്ട് പക്ഷേ ആ മൂന്ന് തൊട്ട് ആറ് മണി വരെ ആ ഫ്ലോൾ ഫ്ലോളിൽ കടന്നു അപ്പോൾ സാമങ്ങൾ ഒന്ന് ആദ്യം വിളിക്കുന്നത് ബെന്നി ബ്രദറിനെയാണ് ബെന്നി ബ്രദറിനെ കിട്ടിയില്ലെങ്കിൽ എന്നെ വിളിക്കും അപ്പോൾ അങ്ങനെ പല പ്രാവശ്യങ്ങൾ അങ്ങനെ എനിക്കും ബെന്നി ബ്രദറിനും രാവിലെ പോയി ആൻറ്റീനെ ഫ്ലോറിൽ നിന്ന് പൊക്കിയെടുത്ത് പിന്നെ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് സംസാരിക്കാനും ഒക്കെ വലിയൊരു സാവകാശം കിട്ടിയിട്ടുണ്ട് അതിനേക്കാൾ ഉപരി ആൻറ്റിക്കൊരു മിഷ് ഞങ്ങൾ തമ്മിലുള്ള വലിയ ഒരു ഒരു ക്ലോസ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു മൈൻഡ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ആൻറ്റി മിഷന് വലിയൊരു താല്പര്യമുള്ള ആളാണ് അങ്ങനെയാണ് ആൻറ്റി പ്ലാനോയിലെ വീട് വിറ്റിട്ട് മക്കിനിയിലേക്ക് വരുന്നത് ആ മക്കിനിയിലാണെങ്കിൽ വലിയൊരു നല്ല വീടാണ് ഒരുപാട് ആളുകളെ കൊണ്ടുവരാൻ പറ്റും അങ്ങനെയാണ് ഫ്രസ്കോ ഫെലോഷിപ്പ് തുടങ്ങി അവിടെ നിന്ന് അനേക ആത്മാക്കളെ ദൈവ നമ്മുടെ ചർച്ചിൽ വരുവാൻ അനേ അനേക ആത്മാക്കളെ ആൻറ്റിയിലൂടെ നേടുവാനായിട്ട് സ സഹായിച്ചു അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ചെങ്ങന്നൂർ ഒരു ചർച്ച് തുടങ്ങുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് ബെന്നി ബ്രദറിൻ്റെ കസിൻ മുഖാന്തരം ആൻറ്റിയാണ് അതിന് ഇനിഷ്യേറ്റീവ് എടുത്ത് ഫ്യൂണൽ ഹോമും നല്ല ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുള്ളായിട്ട് ചർച്ചുകളും അങ്ങനെ ഒരുപാട് നല്ല കാര്യങ്ങൾക്ക് ആൻറ്റി സാക്ഷ്യം വഹിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് അപ്പം എനിക്ക് തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും എല്ലാ ഞങ്ങളാണെങ്കിൽ എല്ലാ ആഴ്ചയിലും ആൻറ്റി വിളിക്കും ഞാൻ അങ്ങോട്ട് പോയില്ലെങ്കിൽ ആൻറ്റി വിളിക്കും അപ്പോൾ ഞങ്ങൾ റിയലി ഗോയിൻ ടു മിസ് ഹർ സാമങ്കൾ ഐം റിയലി പ്രൗഡ് ഓഫ് യു ലീസ ആൻഡ് ജോഷ സൂസൻ നമുക്ക് ആൻറ്റിക്ക് പകരം വയ്ക്കാൻ ആളില്ല എന്നാൽ നല്ല ഓർമ്മകളും നല്ല ലെഗസിയും നമുക്ക് ആൻറ്റി വെച്ചായിട്ടാണ് പോയിരിക്കുന്നത് ദൈവം നമ്മളെ അനുഗ്രഹിക്കട്ടെ ബിഹാഫ് ഓഫ് മെട്രോ ചർച്ചിൻ്റെ ഫൈനാൻസ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റും ഡീക്കൻസ് എല്ലാ അനുശാദനവും സന്തോഷ അറിയിക്കുന്നു അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ആൻറ്റി അവസാന നിമിഷങ്ങളിൽ നോക്കുവാനായിട്ട് ഹോസ്പീസ് ഹോം ഹെൽത്തെല്ലാം അതിൻ്റെ നേതൃത്വം കൊടുത്ത ഷിബു ചാക്കോ ഡിയോൻ ഗിരീഷ് ഷെറി തുടങ്ങിയ ഞങ്ങളുടെ സ്റ്റാഫിൻ്റെ അനുശോചനവും ഞാൻ ഈ സമയത്ത് അറിയിക്കുന്നു തുടർന്ന് നാട്ടിലായിരിക്കുന്ന എൻ്റെ പ്രിയ ഫാമിലി ബേദലഹൈം കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി ചർച്ച് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ വിജോസ് ജേക്കബ് തുടങ്ങിയവരുടെ എല്ലാ അനുശോചനവും ഈ സമയത്ത് അറിയിച്ചു നിർത്തു
Praise God. Most respected Pastor Sadish Kumar, Pastor Saji Daniel, other dearly loving pastors, dear loving Dr. Sam Toya Collet, our doctor uncle, Lisa Josh Santosh. Mary Auntie, Santosh, Esther, and dear they loved ones. My name is Sunil. When I was listening to Dr. Stephen and uh, Joshua, I think there is a competition that's going on. I know our doctor and he was an accomplished athlete. So I'm not sure it was planned earlier that there is a competition that I need to compete. I'm not sure, but I just wanted to say before I go, if any of you call yourself as the favorite, I'm here for that too. And if you say that you, I heard Joshua saying that it was recorded on the video, I'm not that techy. But I do have a paper that Dr. Andy has written in the ICU when she was on the vent when I walked in there, she has written, I don't know where she was looking, my favorite, beautiful, Sunil and Rini. I still have that paper. I will hand it over, a copy of that. It is in the safe to Pastor Sadish for verification. Hope that will count. Thank you, Pastor. Well, I'm here to compete with the Benny brother as well because I'm from one of the finest prayer fellowship that I have ever known, the Frisco Faith Fellowship. Many of you are aware of it. That gave me a chance to be here. Uncle, I'm so honored beyond, <coughs> excuse me. I never practiced for this one before. To offer my sympathy, it is truly privilege to know one of the finest and sweetest person that I ever come across. And to all the medical professionals who are here, when I said she is sweetest one, I lost my dad at the age of 14. And I thought he was sweet. I lost my father-in-law. I thought he was sweeter than my father two years back. But in a few days back, I lost the sweetest one. Against the HIPAA rules, you can ask Dr. Uncle to reveal her lab reports. Always her sugar level was in the 500s to 600s. And as Joshua said it, it was in the metro, but it was our little prayer fellowship. And he always start with the dessert first. She always maintained. As you can see me, I don't produce any light. I'm not capable of producing light, but I reflect my light, the light that's shining upon me. Dr. Andy was a true source of light because I think the Lord has filled her with the light because every person who come in front of her, she noticed it. Adhirigal illata, agara 
സൗഷ്ഠവത്തിൻ്റെ പരിമിതികൾ അപ്പുറമായി ചിന്തിച്ച ഒരു ആൻറ്റി ടു നോ ദ പേഴ്സൺ ആൻഡ് ടു പുട്ട് ദ വാല്യൂ ദ ഇൻട്രൻസിക് വാല്യൂ ഓഫ് എവറി ഹ്യൂമൻ ബീയിങ് ഈസ് ദാറ്റ് ദ ഗോഡ് ഹാസ് ക്രിയേറ്റഡ് ദാറ്റ് പേഴ്സൺ ആൻഡ് യു ബിലീവ്ഡ് ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് and you made every single person who walked in her made feel so special she was full of love and laughter when you were talking about the food in the car it will come because you know this pastor knows that pastor was there many times many of other you know people from here gave wonderful messages including pastor shaj daniel ഭൗതികമായിട്ടും സ്പിരിച്വലായിട്ടും ആത്മീകമായിട്ടുള്ള ആഹാരങ്ങൾ കൊടുക്കുമ്പോൾ അതിനുവേണ്ടി വി ഹാഡ് കൗൺസിലേഴ്സ് വി ഹാഡ് തിങ്ക് ടാങ്ക്സ് വി ഹാഡ് പോളിസി മേക്കേഴ്സ് യു നോ സം ഓഫ് സം ഓഫ് ദ ടൈംസ് ലൈക്ക് ആഫ്റ്റർ ദ പ്രയർ ഫെലോഷിപ്പ് വെൻ വി സിറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഡിബേറ്റ് ഓൺ ദ യു നോ ഡൈനിങ് ടേബിൾ ആസ് ഇഫ് ലൈക്ക് അറ്റ് ദിങ് അറ്റ് ദ ടൈം ഇറ്റ് വാസ് പ്രസിഡന്റ് ജോർജ് ബുഷ് ടൈം ലൈക്ക് ബുഷ് വാസ് വെയ്റ്റിംഗ് ഫോർ ദ കൗൺസിൽ ഫ്രം അവർ ഫ്രിസ്കോ ഫെയ്ത്ത് ഫെലോഷിപ്പ് ടു മേക്ക് ദ യു നോ ദ ഡിസിഷൻസ് ദോസ് പീപ്പിൾ വെർ ദർ but god has enabled different talents to different people god just gave me a belly and uh, this mortal body needs food i'm attracted to that and that's all i needed it but you know every single time when i made a trip to dr angle's house when i came out i realized that there is a design flaw in the suv designing because when i go from my house to their house it was okay for me to sit and drive i can freely turn the wheel but when i leave their home i feel like like you no know, i can barely turn by my steering wheel because for some reason the space shrink my wife was telling that it is not the car it is your tummy and she said it is not your you know the the ability to control or behave in a situation and he filled us with food and he filled us with this, filled us with happiness love care and he was a true gem nyan eppozhu aunty odu parayarundayirunnu aunty appachan arinjondu kunnumolla aunty ennu perittu and i heard from many people she was his favorite but aunty was so fortunate she was not only the earthly appachan's favorite she was the heavenly father's favorite as well and he defied the odds many times i think death knocked on her doors of multiple times she rejected it she ignored it and i think this time lord said it kunju mole i'm serious you better come and as always she listened it was an honor it was a privilege it was such a wonderful thing to know her I saw her at the age of 26 in 2009. Now I when I'm standing at 27 I saw the print that Andy's age has returned 72 I think there is a typo because she always made me feel that she was at my age. So we both together enjoyed every second. And to uncle to Lisa George Susan you were such a blessing for all of us and I'm not here to compete when he is there it's a futile attempt uncle I thank god for who you are for this family and for giving us a chance to know a person a real gem and to evaluate to look into it to maybe make better ourselves jeevathinte teechulayil aayirikkumbolum pottichirikkamanna padipichiyorandi kannuneerinte mullanubhavangalil aayirikkumbolum karayada irikkan pattuvana nammale parayada padipichiyandi jeevathate jeevichu thanne theertha njangalde sundariyaya kunnumolandike ഞങ്ങളുടെ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട ഡോക്ടർ ആൻഡിക്ക് ഓൺ ബിഹാഫ് ഓഫ് അൺഒഫീഷ്യൽ വേ ഓൺ ബിഹാഫ് ഓഫ് ദ ഫ്രിസ്ക് ഓഫ് ഹിസ് ഫെലോഷിപ്പ് ബട്ട് മോർ ദാൻ എനിത്തിങ് എൽസ് ഓൺ ബിഹാഫ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് ലിറ്റിൽ ഗായ് ഹു ഓൾവേസ് യു ആസ് മീ ടു സേ ദ കുഞ്ഞിക്ക പ്രയർ ആം ഹിയർ ടു ഓഫർ മൈ കുഞ്ഞു
Kunya ya condolences to the dearly loved ones. May God bless us all. Thank you. First off, my heartfelt condolences to Sam, Uncle, Lisa, Mo, Josh, Susan, Marietta, Danny Child, and um, Lily, Andy, Grace, Andy, Esther, and all the family, extended family, to Pastor and Sister Anita, to Metro Church of God, and all the grieving um, people around the world, and everyone watching me. I, I just want to want to just ask the Lord to strengthen us all. My relationship with Kunyamolandi is very different. Um, I've known her almost 20 years, going on 20 years. We have a Madras connection. I was raised in Chennai, so that is one. And when I think of my relationship with Andy, the scripture that comes to my mind is when, you know, Jesus says, um, no one that has left homes, brothers, sisters, mother, father, friends, children, fields, will fail to receive in this life, in this, in this present age, 100 times more, and persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. That's the scripture that comes to my mind. And, and he was to me, and, I, and some of you all already know, I come from a Catholic background. I came to know Jesus at the age of 18. And for those who have come from, um, you know, traditional um, backgrounds, you probably can relate to what I'm saying. You know, there's a phase that you go through where you have Jesus in your heart and you have the joy of the Lord and everything. But on the one side, there's this huge price to pay, right? You lose your loved ones, your family, right? It's almost like um, being orphaned. You know, even while you have parents, that, that sense of being an orphan where you're abandoned, rejected, you know, just, you know, that, that, was, that was a phase that I was going through. And, and Manisri, I know you're watching, and I'm sure you can relate to what I'm saying. So Andy took me on, you know, underneath her wings. She held me close to her bosom. When, when I, you know, when I met her 20 years ago, we had been in this country about five years. I was a young uh, Christian, still a young Christian, young mother, you know, new uh, immigrant, young wife. And, uh, you know, I was in, in, in a place where it was very, very difficult to stand for the Lord in faith. And she, you know, God brought, of course, several moms in my life, but of them all, she was the most special. You know, as most of you have already said this, right? She has this unique way of making you feel special. Like you are the most important, you know, person in the whole world. That's, that's exactly how I felt every time I was with her. And she would cook for me. She would encourage me. She would share so many stories of, you know, Apachin and his life of faith. And when he set out from his home, you know, abandoned and everything, you know, how the Lord never let, uh, let, let him, um, you know, uh, let, um, you know, never, never let him feel that way, feel alone. And she, one scripture I remember she always says is, Mola, you, you know, those who look to the Lord are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. She always said that time and again to me. And, uh, you know, when I think of times, you know, uh, when uh, even for one of my interviews, she came to me. A lot of people talk the talk. She was one that also walked it. You know, who would now to think about, you know, going with someone on, on a trip to, you know, I interviewed at New Jersey and I was so afraid. I was a foreign graduate and trying to make the whole big journey ahead of me. And Andrew would encourage me. She came with me physically. She came with me on that interview trip. And I remember, you know, landing in New Jersey airport and it was snowing so heavily. I cried and I said, Andy, I think we need to go back. I don't think I can survive. I, can, I don't think I can do this. And she said, Mole, God is with you, and he's going to help you. And she said, Mole, just read this like a practice interview. God's not going to send you here. He has a special place for you. And she was always cheering me on, encouraging me. The next morning was my interview, and when I came out of the shower, 
you know, she had all my, my clothes, my dress, my suit and everything ironed and kept ready for me and just cheering me on. She prayed me through and so many instances. She was there for all the major, you know, life, life milestones in my life, like my graduation, my brother's graduation, Achichan's baptism, you know, so many things. You know, she, uh, I, if I say I'm going to miss her, that would be an understatement. Because, and again, on a lighter note, you know, she, as you all said already, she is such a, how do I say it? She's such a vibrant, full of life and joy. And, you know, she's the life of every party. You know, this morning we were talking about how when she walks into the room, she knows how to, the whole space changes. It, the whole space lights up. That's just the way she is. And, you know, um, with, I'm, I'm sure some of you may recall, um, you know, from Metro, we went on this uh, picnic. I believe it was 2013. And that time she had barely been discharged from the hospital after the long haul. And uncle, um, you and her, and uh, we were all there. And I don't know, I just felt so much of joy bubbling inside of me. And I said, I went up to Andy and I said, Andy, I, I, I'm just so happy. Andy, I feel like dancing. Would you dance with me? And she said, of course, Mole. And then she came and, you know, of course she didn't pass that. She, she did a few steps, she pulled uncle. And then in no time, you know, there was a whole crowd of us dancing that day. And, you know, she was amazing. She's such a, she was such an amazing woman. I have no words to even, you know, I have no words to express how much she meant to me and, and my family, Appa and Amma, you know, Saji, all of them sent their love and their, and their condolences to all of you. She would be dearly missed and I can't wait for the day, you know, when Andy, Kunjimol Andy, that that you and I are going to dance in heaven with the Jesus, with Jesus, the one that we love the most. I know, I know, Andy, you're already dancing there. <laughs> Where there's no more pain, no suffering, no more poking or prodding. <laughs> Sam, uncle, you have displayed to us so many glimpses of water what a strong and perfect marriage looks like. And I thank God for the strength that he gave you through all these years to stand by Andy through thick and thin. Lisa, Mall, George, you guys, Susan, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. I count this such an honor that you asked me to share a few words and may God bless you all and strengthen you all. I remembering the very first time we met Kunyol Andy. Dr. Sam, uh, Lisa, and George, in 1990, when our family we were visiting Peoria, Illinois, my brother's house, and I, that's where I met uh, Dr. Sam and Kunyumolandi the very first time. And following the 1991, they moved to Dallas, and then, they, then we become more closer and attached, and also they become part of the church that I pastored in 1990s and early 2000. Then I, we know um, Sister Mary Mama and Emmanuel Agur, Esther and Sandosh, their families. And later on, we met every one of the siblings of Kunyolandi, those who passed away some time ago, and those who living in New York, the Gracie Andy, and one live in uh, Minnesota, Lily, and her family, then uh, Brother Daniel, uncle, and his family. And, uh, you know, we know all of them met many occasions, uh, church together, many occasions in Dallas. And, you know, we love this family so much. Many of them are shared here, their close uh, relationship with this family. Uh, even before we met her, my wife and her father and my brother-in-law Joe, they will know this family from Madras as well. They participate the uh, Dr. Sam and Kunjimol's wedding and uh, uh, then they know from that day uh, itself. But uh, they like it also very, very well. Dr. Sam, I'm not, I'm not going to compete with uh, uh, anybody here, Brother Joshua or any other uh, brothers who share their memories and uh, association with this family. 
Kunyola and they really like uh, the food that the mercy made. You know, there is a one special food is called a pongal. It is a, it is a Madras uh, uh, special. And she liked those, uh, even though the last uh, several months, uh, while she was not able to eat anything else, she ate pongal. Dr. Sam called us and uh, said she liked a pongal for the breakfast. She liked the breakfast, she liked the pongal for her lunch, and she even ate the pongal for her dinner. She liked it all three times. So we beat all of you. She liked our food very well. Not only the pongal, sambar, and uh, you know, the, the Italy and uh, Madras Rasam, she liked it all. She enjoyed, and we enjoyed, and in many occasions we go there and visited this family. We share our love and compassion with this family. And every time she asked, oh, I remember Pastor Joe's, I would like to see. So, you know, fortunately or not, without their calling, we'd be there. The time when she liked to see us, we'd be there. You know, it's, it's kind of like a coincidence sometimes. Many occasions she called us and doctor called us and could you all want to pray for her? So we prayed on the phone here. So what I'm trying to tell you is we have a close relationship. This evening, we mourn with you, Dr. Sam, Lisa, and George. I remember when you were moving to Dallas, you were a little boy running around, up and down. And, uh, you know, we church together. This family was so close to us. We spent a lot of time together in their house, our house, all day long, Sundays, and, you know, we enjoy every moment of the time with Mary and you also. So this evening, I would like to bring the condolences from my older brother who live in Peoria. I mean, he live in Bloomington, Illinois now. He said he wanted to share his uh, condolences with uh, you all. Pastor Joseph K. Joseph from Chicago, he wanted to express his condolences to grieving family. My brother-in-law, Joe Samuel, my brother, Vargis Vargis, Bevukuti, uh, and all my siblings, Sam, Babu, James, Alice, Mercy, and their families, they all want to bring the condolence to each of you. Swadesham Kanmadina Betha Perto 
as I stand here in my body today, um, my heart grieves for the wonderful time that we got to know Anne Anti. It's probably about three years ago we came to know Anne Anti because of Susan. And God gave us a really wonderful time. Um, Anne Anti had an excellent spirit. And uh, Anne Anti and I shared uh, some two things in common. One was a little bit of Madras, because I did a, two of my years in school in Madras. And uh, she loved food just like I do. And, uh, and we did have uh, some good time of fellowship. Um, uh, Auntie loved food, Auntie loved sweets, especially jalebis and uh, ladoo. And uh, when she would come home, we would like sneak it in and we would just have her, and she would light up and, you know, we, would, we had a good time. Um, also, we also remember the time then uh, we, Mercy made this crab curry just for Auntie. It was amazing. We had a fantastic time. And uh, um, yeah, I know you all mentioned about pongal and sambar, but she loved her fish curry and crab curry too. And uh, even though I don't have anything on video or on in paper, I know that Auntie loves me. And uh, this night we are really honored to be part of your family. And... Uh, the good hope that we have is, as Christians is that we're going to see Auntie, and Auntie lives on, and, uh, and we thank God for the salvation that he has given us, and the joy, and uh, as I say, this is something that we have to experience, as the scripture says, taste and know that the Lord is good. God gave us this opportunity on this earth to spend this wonderful time with Auntie and Uncle, and to, to see you as a wonderful couple so strong, caring for one another, and such a role model example for husbands and wives. May God bless, and may the peace that passes all understanding through Christ Jesus continue with you during this time. God bless. Respected pastors, dear Sam Mango, Lisa, Josh, Susan, and all Andy's family, and dear friends, my name is Minnie. My relationship with Andy dates back to 1997 when I moved from West Virginia to Dallas. I did not know of any of my families here then and did have only very few friends. When my uncle, Joshi, called Sam Angle and told him about me, within a few days, Uncle Andy, Josh and Lisa came to visit me. Within a few minutes of our encounter, I could feel Andy's love, her warmth and her inviting spirit. Andy and uncle, had accepted me into their family, and I was honored to be uncle's niece from then onwards. I became a part of their every function. I became a part of their every day activity event, and he would call me and spend time with me. From then onwards, until I got married, I would look forward for weekends to attend prayer meetings at their house, to go on Sundays to church with them, and after service, as many of you mentioned, we would go to the restaurants. And, or we would come back home and spend time together eating Andy's delicious food. Andy was a great cook too. Andy and I had a lot of things in common. We both enjoyed sweets, like you all mentioned. And when we go to a restaurant, we first would try the sweets, the dessert, and then only we'll try the main course. And both of us loved to cook. So I learned a lot of tips from Andy every time I was with her. I had my many of my first with Uncle and Aunt, my first trip to the Arboretum, my first Christmas show at the Prestonwood Baptist Church, just to mention a few of those. Lisa and my birthday is on the same day. Andy would always make sure to have a prayer meeting at their home to celebrate our birthdays. Or we would go to a fancy restaurant and spend a lot of time together enjoying that day. And he was a great listener. She gave me very many practical advices and she would encourage me and reassured me to help me through the many challenges I faced uh, in my life. She was my prayer warrior. Her prayers got me through many of the hardships that I endured in life. Even last Wednesday, when she went to visit Andy, she had just come from, home, from the hospital. She was very tired and very weak. Still, she placed her hand on our daughter 
blessed her and prayed for her. It meant a lot to all of us. Andy appreciated every little thing we did for her, even the most insignificant things. She valued the time we would spend with her. She genuinely cared for all of us and made us all feel so special, like all of you mentioned. Even though Andy was in so much pain from neuropathy, she never complained. Nothing dampened her spirit. She was always positive and very cheerful. Andy, I will miss you very dearly, especially your phone calls checking on me very frequently, your smile, your hospitality, and your prayers. Sam Ungu, like everybody mentioned, I don't know of any husbands in this world that took care of his wife like the way you did. Last three years, whenever I visit Andy, she looks so good. Her hair was well combed, her skin is glowing, and I would tell Andy, Andy, you look so beautiful. And she would immediately say, it's all because of your uncle. She did, and uncle, you did it exceptionally well. You are a big role model to a lot of our husbands, and I hope our husbands noted that. Lisa and Josh, I thank Andy for raising such loving children. She was so proud of both of you and would always tell me how well you both took care of her. We would talk for hours on the phone. And Susan, you are a perfect addition to our family. And she loved you so much, especially the last three months she got to spend with you. And every time she would visit you at Austin and stuff. Uncle, Lisa, Josh, Susan, Mary Andy, and all family members, may the Lord fill your hearts with peace and strengthen you. Thank you, Uncle, for giving me an opportunity to share about Andy. Let me end my words with the heavenly assurance that one day we'll meet Andy in eternity, waiting to receive all of us with our open arms. And regarding the competition, I was Andy's favorite aunt, <laughs> a favorite niece, and she was my favorite aunt too. And anytime I needed to speak to her, she would, even if she's weak, she would first answer the phone and say, Mole, are you okay? I didn't hear from you for a week. Is everything okay? How is Prakash doing? Is Mole okay? She was so concerned about every one of us. And Auntie, I don't know how I had to express that. You really made it my life. When I came here, I didn't know anybody. I was completely lost. And he took me into a home and would introduce everybody, say, this is our niece, this is our niece. And that made me so good. I was so honored, Uncle. Thank you so much. And thank you, family, for accepting me as one of yours. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Esther. I'm Connie Morante's niece. Our elder sister, Mary Kay, is my mommy. You're hearing all these amazing stories about my auntie. And all the chaches and uncles, y'all say y'all are her favorite. <laughs> but let me tell you a story, okay? The inside scoop that you may not know. <laughs> the joke around our families is that I'm auntie's eldest daughter. She gave me up to this elderly couple that was um, wanting a daughter for so long. I guess they were bored with my chacha. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, everyone says we look alike. And I think for a while I may have believed this joke. Konyamanti is who I wanted to always be like. She was fierce and all woman power. The modern Indian woman back in the day. She empowered me to be who I am. She was the Indian woman who did it all back then when women were not allowed to do much. She did track, like my uncle said, and won many medals. She rode a bike when women could, didn't, not sideways, to write it the way we do here. She did. I remember back in the early 90s, I think I was in middle school in Dallas, she was the first woman in the Malibu County community to be a board member. 
Now, back then, we only had a handful of Indian churches, not as many as we do here now. She paved the way for many women to be respected and hold a position in the church today. She gave me hope in our community growing up when a lot of parents were afraid to let their kids join functions and clubs at school. She gave me a reason to say, well, Kunimanti did athletics in India, why can't I? Whenever I would visit Plano House, she would take us to the rec center and let me practice bas basketball so I could get better. She would sit and tell me stories about everything she would do in India that made me feel confident and make me want to work harder. More importantly, she t also taught me to love everyone. I also always saw her giving God thanks in everything she did. Her elegance when she walked in a sari and how she put it on. How she treated her husband, my uncle, made me want to make sure I find a husband like uncle. You know, they took care of my apachin. And as we know in our community, not many women bring their parents, but my auntie and uncle did. It made me see that that's, that's a strong woman and a kind uncle. And many men here today see that because that is your wife's parents. These are a few memories I have of her. There were many. On, I'm speaking now on behalf of all of aunties, nieces, and nephews. I know we all would want to thank her for being an open heart and hope. Hope. We will all remember her as being extraordinarily generous, fun-loving, and positive. We all have stories of staying over in massive gatherings and sleeping in a group of 20 on the living room floor, laughing and having fun all night long. As a kid, you only think about the fun. And now as an adult, we can see how much it took to plan all those gatherings. The amount of work, stress, and money that went into inviting our massive family over is a no small task. But she did everything with joy and a sweet smile. Our dear Sam uncle by her side, supporting her in whatever her heart desired. Sam uncle, you're the best husband to her. We thank you for taking such good care of our auntie. Auntie always encouraged us and believed we could achieve the greatest things. Her beaming smile, kind heart, and encouraging positive spirit will be missed by us all. Before I leave this stage, one more thing I want to say. Auntie was a believer and she loved God so much. When Lisa asked me a couple days ago to say something, I felt pressed on my heart that there's someone if it's online, here, if you need, you want to know Jesus. And he would want you to know him. Get to know him. Call Pastor Sunfish and get to know who he is. For God loves you. It doesn't matter your past. He just wants to, you to come to him. Thank you very much. Creator of all creation. Holy is your name. Thank you for giving us this time. Thank you for allowing your son to die on the cross for all of us. Shalom and good evening, everyone. My name is Santosh Emmanuel Abraham. Uh, I am the nephew of this dear, sweet woman. We affectionately knew as Kunyamalanti. My own mother 
Mary Kyleth Abraham is her oldest loving sister. Behind me stands my wife, Najia Sarah, and my two lovely daughters, Annika and Angelica, who also knew and loved my dear auntie. And just off script, um, to many of you who said favorites and food, um, I have the, had the privilege of whenever we were at church meetings or weddings or events, my, my auntie would always say, Santo Shimone, I didn't get any dessert. Go grab me something. And I would do so faithfully, not knowing that she already had two or three servings. But that was my privilege. <clears throat> Some of you had known her only recently within the last few years, uh, but my journey began when I was 10 years of age, when my aunt and another beloved New York auntie, Gracie auntie, came to live with us when we moved to Texas. Those years were tough. We lived in a cockroach-infested two-bedroom apartment. My two aunts and myself all shared one bedroom. We all struggled during those early years in America. But you know what? We were happy. And we didn't have many stresses as we have today. My parents worked hard, and eventually we moved to a humble, nicer home where my aunts continued to spoil me with their affection. This was not only in Texas, but even back home in India as well. Many of you had direct experiences with this God-fearing lady, and they all speak loudly of her brave and sweet nature. Auntie, I, how foundly I miss your mischievous energy that we both shared. Some of us have already shared or will speak about her many enduring qualities. So today I won't take time to talk about those things because I simply don't have enough time to share all the love that she shared. Instead, I want to share the legacy that she left, but more on that in a moment. Equally as important, I want to honor her husband, Dr. Sam George Toikolotu. He is truly a saint. I don't have enough words to describe how much respect and admiration I have for you, my dear uncle. Not enough words describe this man's sacrificial love and devotion to his wife. He stayed through thick and thin, through pain and suffering, and remained with the wife of your youth till the end. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Uncle, for being the best soulmate a spouse could possibly have. I remember when you and my aunt first got married, I didn't know who this gentleman was, for I was the only man-child in my auntie's life up until this point. But let me tell you, when I found out he loved tennis just as much as I did, I knew he was the right man for the job. Years later, whenever we would go and visit my auntie's family, I would secretly look forward to just simply hanging out or playing tennis with Sam Uncle. Now back to the le legacy my aunt left embodied in her children. Lisa. Lisa. 
You exude your mother's intelligence, passion for communication skills, courage to take a stand for the underserved communities around the globe. You illuminate her relentless determination not to give up. Joshua, you carry forth her softer side. a reflective intellect, a quiet sense of hope that calmed the worried soul. You embody her compassionate, caring spirit as well, her humble humility to say sorry when one realizes we're in the wrong or insensitive to another's hurt they suffered during their life struggles. She put aside, my auntie put aside her own pain in the process of showing empathy or comforting her fellow human beings as today some of you have experienced. In closing, auntie, if you can hear this, thank you for teaching me many things. If I only had an ounce of your fearlessness, Thank you for leaving behind the most loving family, devoted husband, loving uncle, and amazing children to my dear cousins. Auntie, you will be dearly missed. Until we meet again, we all love you. Thank you. Well, as I was sitting through the service, I've noticed that Anna Auntie had many, many favorites, and I'm not going to try to enter into that competition. But as I said here, I do want to make one observation. Only a woman that experiences tremendous favor from the Lord can allow others to experience such favor. Scripture says that favor only comes from the Lord. And our our Anna Auntie was a sweet conduit of that favor to many of us. And each of you are a testimony to that. So as a word of hope, I'd like to quote a hymn, a modern day hymn. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. From life's first cry to our final breath, Jesus commands our destiny. There's no power in hell. No scheme of man that could ever pluck us from his hand. So until he returns or he calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. So dear Sam, Uncle, Lisa, Josh, Susan, friends and family and our church family, I stand here before you with a perplexing mix of emotions, you know. We experience grief and hope together simultaneously. It's a stark contrast of emotions that only Christians can experience. To grieve and have hope at the same time is a discipline that only Christ followers can have. We live in this moment, but we also believe in a moment that is to come one day. After I became uh, the associate pastor here at church, pastor took me on a couple of home visits so I would get to know the church. I had only been on the job for a week and one of the first houses we visited was Dr. Sam's house, and we visited Anna Auntie. Uh, we walked in, and Anna Auntie was sitting there, and she began to tell us lots of stories. Together, they shared these stories. It was about the rich legacy of faith, um, the mission to take the gospel into Tamil Nadu. We listened closely as she told a story with great detail, great memory. And at some point, she'd laugh, and she would talk about how she was the favorite. Uh, child of her parents. Um, We cherish those memories because they're full of faith, they're full of legacy, they're full of mission, and it's something as the next generation we should carry on. Actually, when I look back and reflect on my life, that's exactly what I needed as I started to become a pastor, to be inspired by stories of our heritage. So last week, as I continued in my pastoral duties, I visited a family from our church who had a newborn. And 
My wife and I held that baby in our arms, and we heard that baby crying, and I felt a sudden presence of God. But within an hour, um, I had a, got a text from pastor to come um, to Anna Auntie's house. And there at the bedside with pastor, Pastor Auntie, Pastor Reuben, myself, we had Holy Communion together. And there, Anna Auntie shared stories, uncle shared stories, um, and we felt the nearness of God in that place. Again, in that solemn, holy place next to her bedside, again, I felt the strong presence of God. I can't explain everything that God does in our life and the things that happen, but one thing I am certain of as a young pastor, that from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands our destiny. Anna Auntie knew that. She trusted God till the very end. She knew that God himself was superintending every detail of her life. She would even say that every moment, every detail God knows, she loved God so much that she would even negotiate with God. Keep me around for a little longer. There's a couple more milestones I need to see in my children's life. And God obliged. That's the kind of relationship she had because she knew God commanded the destiny of everyone. So even in that moment, as I was about to leave, I leaned over to say goodbye to your mom. And then she said to me, hey, you know you're a good preacher. So you make sure you take this gospel to the next generation. And I told her I would do just that. So church, be comforted today. Auntie's legacy lives in each and every one of us, especially her dear family. We as a church will carry the heritage and this legacy of the gospel to the ends of the earth. Until he returns or calls us home, together, here in the power of Christ, we will stand. We will see Annie Auntie again soon, but until then, we shall all press forward and carry the baton, carry the baton in every sphere of influence, every place that he takes us, every person that we meet, into that next place of mission. We love you, dear family. I know I don't have the words to say to comfort you, but the Lord will. And so we will continue to carry that legacy forward. And Auntie, we miss you. We'll see you again. Amen. Again, as Pastor Linson mentioned, again, I was sitting there. I didn't want to get into that competition because today was all about the competition. Who's Auntie's favorite? Um, yes, Pastor Jose, you rightly mentioned, maybe she was, uh, you were her favorite till she uh, met the next person. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how diplomatic she was. And this was a joke going around last week in the house as she was in hospice care. When Lisa is not there, she will say to Josh, you are my chakra, Umma. You know, then when Josh is there, then she will say, you are my chakra, Moon. You know, you are my favorite. But, you know, she knew how to, she knew how to be with people. And we really love, you know, we really love her in that way that she had that sense of humor all the time. There are so many fond memories of uh, Auntie. One of the reasons why she told me that she, um, she, she liked me or she loved me is because she would always compare me to her older brother, K Dr. K.K. John, because um, she had so much fond admiration and she held him in a very high esteem as a servant of God and as a man of God. So, so she would always compare me to him and she would say, whenever I see you preach and you know, talk, I exactly see that, uh, my, my older brother. And early this year, uh, Reverend Kiki John also went to be with the Lord. I mean, we had a great desire of going together and maybe going and meeting uh, him in Minnesota, but that never happened. Um, we'll continue this journey uh, that she has left behind for us in the legacies that, that she has laid with dear uncle and with children. Uh, we, will, we are definitely going to miss her, uh, her smile, her warmth, her love. And, and someone has rightly said here, she had that unique ability to find that intrinsic worth of each person and make them feel that they are valuable. And that's so beautiful of her legacy that will continue on. Uh, once again, thank you all for those who are watching us online. Thank you for joining us this evening. Even as we commemorated, we celebrated this, this beautiful life of our dear Anna Ante. As a church body, um, we had the privilege to lift her up to the throne room of grace and pray for her so often. In 2012, the first time she suffered the stroke and the heart attack, uh, we were driving and uh, when uncle called and said, you know, he was also crying and he didn't have words to speak. 
And we started off from Mesquite, uh, driving to um, the McKinney Hospital. And as we were driving, I saw an ambulance passing on the other side. I took that as a sign. Uh, I, you know, uh, and we were on the prayer line, actually. We were on the prayer line. The whole church is praying for her, for recovery. And I took that as a sign and a symbol that the Lord is speaking. You know, this is, you know, when you see an ambulance going with flashing light, what do you see? First response. First response. Or there is going to be a rescue. And we took that as a sign to say the Lord is speaking that this is not the time for her to go. And then we saw eight more years of anxiety. This October, I spoke to her. I said, it's been eight years. She said, yes, I do remember eight years. And two more months God gave her. We are so thankful and so delighted for her life because all through these eight years that she was, you know, now when I sit there and read her eulogy, she was a pole vault, you know, shot put, sprint, all this champion, you know. This morning as I was sharing, that's the legacy, you know, what she was a strong woman. Amen. Let's look to the Lord in prayer as we come to the conclusion of this uh, evening meeting. Thankful this evening that you gave 72 years of life to our dear Anna and team. She loved you, but more than that, you loved her. You chose her for a special mission on this earth, oh God. As a daughter, as a wife, as a mother, as an elder sister, as an aunt to so many, Lord. And as a wonderful woman of God, she touched so many lives. She impacted so many lives. And this evening we were able to listen and hear the glowing tributes to her life and the memories that people shared, oh God. We are so thankful to thee, oh God. For a life that lived among us, Lord, glorified you all through her life. And even in the midst of her pain and suffering, she still glorified you, O oh God. She still gave you glory and honor, and she gave you thanks. And last week, Lord, when we were celebrating the Lord's table with her, on the one hand, we understood that she is in hospice care, and we understood that there is death all near around us. But we also held in our hand Life, a life that she embraced because she believed in the Lord who said, I am the bread of life. He who eats of me shall never die and I will raise him up on the last day. Yes, Lord, she held on dearly to you, O oh God. So this evening, even as we depart from this memorial service, O oh God, allow us to take back the memories that we heard of dear Auntie Lord and some of those Lord life examples of God that we can apply in our lives of God. Continue to pour your compassion, your Lord peace in Dr. Sam Michael's house, Lord, Lisa, Josh and Susan and all the extended family members and others who were willing to come here but because of, because of this situation they were unable to come, Lord. And all those who are watching us this evening, comfort them, Lord. May your peace fill their hearts. Lord, we are praying for tomorrow's service. Allow us, Lord, to gather here to give a befitting homegoing service for our dear auntie, O oh God, who ran her race very well, who finished her course, Lord, who kept her faith in the Lord. Once again, we give you all the glory and honor. And in Jesus' mighty name, and all of God's people say, Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every, everyone both now and forevermore, and all of God's people say, Amen, Amen. Once again, God bless you.